Konnichiwa and irashaimase. Hello and welcome back to the Tokyo Metropolitan Gymnasium where the action is going down at Tokyo 2020, the Paralympic Games. This is where the wonderful world of table tennis has been knocking around all for the last two weeks here. And this is what we have left for today, Germany versus China. It is the men's team class three gold medal clash. Should be exciting, a rematch with many stars within the sport. Uh, yes, and of course China, uh, as we're used to the defending champions from the last two Paralympic Games. Uh, Germany, the team they beat, so um, a chance for a revenge once again, perhaps. Well, we shall see. Germany's definitely getting stronger and stronger, and China keeps raising the bar. But these are the two teams that we would want to see in the Class 3 final. Rackets out there on the table. Different equipment we'll talk about more in a bit. The format goes like this. Starts off with the doubles. And then after that, we've got a singles match. And if we need a third to decide which team will ultimately win two matches, we go to the deciding match, but only if necessary. And once again, at least on paper, it's the doubles that uh, could be the most exciting and also the decisive uh, match. It is often a big tell and it's quite unpredictable because instead of the, or unlike the head-to-head, -head, I should say, there's more mystery involved because a lot to be said for how the players work together. And this is also the match where uh, the Germans were the closest to uh, actually winning the whole thing in Rio. And here the Germans are. It's Thomas Schmiedberger on the left and Thomas Bruchla on the right. Both stars in their own right. Bruchla, 45 years old on the right. He's world ranked number four. And Thomas Schmiedberger at 29 years old is world ranked number two silver medalist here and really a star throughout the sport. And together, the first ranked team in this competition. Hey now. So Brukla, not only a teacher and a role model to many, but a spectacular player with feeling, touch, and creativity. But on the other side, here is Team China with Feng Pan Feng, 31 years old, world ranked number one, and Jai Xiang, 28 year old, who's very strong. So this makes up the team, loving them in front of that digital Team China flag. Yeah, Zhao Ping, the third player who, as we know now, uh, won't be starting in this match, though. The third player uh, is only allowed to substitute one of the first two seated for the doubles, uh, but the Chinese decided not to go for that option. This might sound funny to say, but in terms of watching them roll in for the table, they're just so smooth and in sync. There's something really... I don't know, smooth about their entrance, <laughs> literally and figuratively. It's, I don't know. I'm excited for a very interesting battle here between the top players in the world. Uh, no doubt it will be once again, and it's um, Schmidberger especially, uh, who has some catching up to do, um, has some unresolved issues with the Chinese, if we can call it that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a game five silver medal after a very tight battle in singles for the gold. You won't face uh, Feng Pan Feng today, um, but uh, it's still a chance uh, to finally take a gold. That is true. So doubles will start. And again, more upsets and possibilities for that. Now, in terms of the rules, First of all, if you're newer to the Paralympic Games in table tennis, there are 11 classes. And the lower the number, the greater the impairment. So class 11, intellectual impairment, six through 10 standing categories, and one through five seated, meaning the players are in wheelchairs. Class number three, the most populated and popular events for players, right in the middle of the pack in terms of mobility and uh, balance and whatnot. I'm actually sitting next to a class three, three-time Paralympian right now. Uh, yeah, this is this is the class that I know best. Uh, of course, I never competed against uh, men, but uh, practiced with them a lot. 
And this is the best of them, 21 players in uh, this men's class three uh, in the singles event. So it is the, the strongest class in para table tennis in the world. So starting normally in a singles match, for wheelchair players, the serve must come off the back of the table. If it stays on the table, comes to rest on the table, or comes off the side of the table, it would be a lead. But in doubles, that is not the case. Now, unlike in the Olympics, in doubles, these players do not have to alternate shots. They simply have to keep their wheelchairs on one half of the table. They can't cross the middle line. Now, their bodies can. They can reach across the table, no problem, but the chair itself cannot, which is much like an extension of the body for a lot of the players because they spend a good portion of their lives in these wheelchairs. So you'll see a lot of stickers of identity, patriotism, or maybe some really cool interplanetary wheels showing the cosmos from Brukla. Yeah, he's a teacher, so that shouldn't be too much of a surprise. Do you think he does astronomy? Uh, I don't know. I think uh, since he teaches in primary school, um, he probably does um, Linear more than algebra. just one subject. <laughs> right. Well, heavy spin on this side. You're going to see different surfaces here. China got through USA in the quarterfinals, 2-0, to zero, and then 2-0 to zero in the semifinals against Thailand. You've got the pips on the red side of the racket there. The player, well, it looks like both sides with the pips on the backhand. Now, on the German side, if I'm not mistaken, it is smooth and inverted rubber on both sides. Yeah, both players use those. So, um... A bit of a difference uh, in terms of the, the rubbers as well on both teams. And this is Jagor Joba from Canada. I did not practice that name for 30 minutes before this. <laughs> and, uh, I'll say this one since it's from Slovenia. I'm proud to present her Milana Kermil. Awesome. I'd practice that one too, but you are a natural. <laughs> I am a native. <laughs> right, I knew it started with an NAT. I just wasn't sure about the last few letters. So they don't have to alternate shots, but they will only. The order of play that is set is the server and the receiver. Every game, the team that is serving gets to choose who serves and then who receives will be determined after the first game. So games are played to 11 points ever since the year 2001. And you alternate serves every two points. And to win the game, you must win by two points. So first team to win three games wins the match. And in the overall team match, the first team to win two matches wins the gold medal. There it is, Zhongguo Dui, Jiao, Chinese team, go for it. Oh, what a cover here, a counter so quick. Power shot in Brukla, the wall. That's why they call him the wall. And a clear tactic of uh, searching for that middle between the two players, as well as um, returning more balls to the uh, clearly weaker of this double, Jai. That right there, Feng Pan Feng, world number one. So good start here for the Germans on the receive. Good placement onto the elbow, getting Schmiedberger to turn, lean out of the way to create space for the forehand. Now that is interesting, when you've got a team with world number one on one side, you are able to play every shot back to the player who is not world number one to avoid the threat. But this setting is a bit more challenging for the Germans since it allows Feng to, to reach more across the table. When he's on the receiving side of the table? 
or serving, for example, this position? Hand switch gets the racket on it. I've seen him do that successfully and continue the rally. It's clever and it's very quick thinking. And this was the right uh, shot to attempt it. An apology for the net there, but good move to follow up that short serve by moving in towards the net. Yeah, and cleverly planned from, from the very serve on both of them and that's why also the players would signal to their teammates what they plan to serve or even discuss with them <laughs> fell asleep a bit a little bit at the wheel we could say schmidberger here oh <laughs> He did, I see. I was going to say, I was watching everything, just wondering what was going to happen next and when the big explosive shots would come out of the bits of side spin in the push game. It's nice. difficult sometimes to keep concentration when uh, the opponents are only returning the ball to your uh, team partner. And I think that's what happened in the previous point. Well, this was very keen once again from Brukla on top of the bounce to play it early on the rise. Well, tactically, there's no question where the Germans are looking to go after the serve, who they're looking to pressure. But I'd say that Jai Xiang is doing his job of keeping it in play, keeping it low. This is the challenge uh, because it can uh, happen quite a lot that uh, the weaker of uh, the players in singles is not necessarily uh, the worst in, uh, in the double pairing. Now, just a reminder, the difference between inverted rubber and the pips, the longer pips not only slow the ball down, but reverse the spin. So if you hit heavy top spin into long pips, it typically comes back heavy under spin, which means you push it back unless it's high enough to go for the kill. Narrowing the gap here, one point down now, China with a second serve. A good follow-up attack for the third ball right down the middle of the table. Fung strong on this one. And again, it's the pips, so it's flat and it's very tough to control on the way back. This one falls just short after quite a fascinating rally. Yeah, patient, um, secure play uh, by Jai, just bringing everything back to the table. And um, yeah, that's uh, where even if the tactic is to play to the weaker player, just once in a while, you have to mix it up a little bit. I think Mr. Brufla in class is going to be Mr. Wall by all of his students who must be watching right now. Really, no matter how hard the ball comes in, he's just chilling, just cool with the racket up to block it back. Yeah, very casually looking style of play. It's the coolest. But that can bring a lot of softness and spin into 
and to hit the balls. Perfect placement down the middle here. Two points ago, the thing that I thought was so spectacular was when Fung dropped the ball, but Jai took a big swing just right behind him. It was very trippy to look at. It almost looked like it could have been coordinated, but now we've got two game points for the Germans. Perfect down the middle, always searching for that ground. So you got Valentin Baus in the crowd, the gold medalist with the rest of the German contingent here. And Germany goes up one to zero over China. A long road ahead, but a solid start for the underdogs. We'll see what happens. Germany versus China, game number two coming right up. Players back to the table for game two. Germany off to a strong start. We'll start with the serves here. Professor Bruchla. I think that's just for college, so maybe Mr. Bruchla. <laughs> it feels weird to say that because it could be so vague, you know? Well, but perhaps at the tennis table, uh, table tennis table, he could be Professor Bruchla. Could be Professor Wall. Perfect placement into the body. All right there between the elbow and the shoulder. Now for Professor Wall, normally he's got the touch, the calm, cool style. Good pressure from the other side. That was right at the baseline of the table. The defense so solid. Yeah, and here uh, Bruckler was uh, deep into uh, on onto Schmidberger's side. For me, it's tough to tell where Bruckler is going to go. He doesn't have as big of a stroke, so there's less sort of predictability on the shot. Another advantage of his loose style. <laughs> yeah. We got Professor Wall, Captain Casual, Captain Cosmos. <laughs> I think we'll have to come up with some nicknames for the others as well. Right down the line, the parallel here from Schmiedberger. I like the smile. Bruchla acknowledging good shots from the opponents, and then it turns to a smile for a bit. Looks over to sort of acknowledge the opponent's excellence. But a bit of a different reaction here. Again, as a team player, sometimes you feel a great sense of responsibility when you miss a shot that you're, you know you're capable of. 
Yeah, the serve is a, a tough one to lose points on. Two rackets going for it is much better than none. Yeah, and in this case, it even uh, probably confused the opponent because they weren't exactly sure which racket uh, the ball bounced off and uh, which direction it will go. Oh. Almost gets the recovery here. Now here's a question. I'm assuming it's legal because it'd be like a double contact in one motion with one player. But what if they both hit the ball at the same time? No problem. Um, phew, I think it would be difficult to do that. I've seen more amazing and crazy things happen, but yeah, it does seem like it would be pretty rare. It'd have to be quite well synchronized. Pretty great coincidence. I'll get the left half of the ball, you get the right. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Ruthla recognized right away that Schmiedberger had a little bit of room for that backswing on it. Seemed like he was a little bit deep behind the table on it, though. One point game, second serve here with the Chinese pair. It's always tough when you get someone way behind the table. Remember, the other player has to keep his wheelchair on his side of the table, so you leave yourself quite exposed on that wide forehand shot. Now once again, the elbow shoulder area. And sitting like this at the table, it's even more difficult to move your body away enough to make that kind of shot. Worked this time, though. Yeah, I think this time you got a big full stroke there from Schmiedberger, and it comes back, because it's heavy topspin, it comes back heavy underspin, and Bruchla had to deal with the residual spin from Schmiedberger's loop. The Chinese need to deal with his dead look. Yeah, that's right. The if looks could kill stare. You don't want to be on the other side of the table from that. This one gets away. I mean, not an easy shot. I think it was right for Brukla to go for it. You've seen him make, let's say, lower percentage shots than that throughout this match. Game point now to Team China, Jai Shang with the second serve. Expertly that covered by Schmidberger while um, Bruckler was getting back into his position. Hey, you mind covering my shift for a minute? I gotta take care of something away from the table. No, very, very good teamwork there. So now Deuce, they will alternate serves until one pair has a two-point lead and takes the game. Yo! Steady hands, Brufla with every, I'd say, change of rotation in this, just changing up the spin, comfortably bringing it back into play with good positioning. doesn't know what to do when uh, the ball is going directly into that area. He missed it twice with the forehand, so he tried the backhand now. Nice change of pace from under the table. Both Schmiedberger and Brukla have been very controlled. I think more than any other pair I've seen, they play the soft spin shots from under the table. 
Game point once again to the Germans. Very good defense by the Chinese pair. They withstood a lot of good attacks here. I mean, it never really felt like the Germans had a put away shot. They were looking for it, attempt there with the side spin. But Jai Shang controlling it, guiding it back low to the net. I think Schmidberger doesn't usually play so far away from the table either. Uh, in singles, so this is a little bit of a different position. <laughs> Same problem as Schmidberger. So now the game point in favor of Team China, Fung with the serve. That ball is loaded with spin, but it's not how much spin is on it. It's how difficult it is to read. When you're a teacher, you do a lot of reading. So, <laughs> Professor Wall out here with the perfect touch shot. <laughs> Slow and spinny, an awkward shot. Their change of pace has been very effective, the Germans. Some support from their team, the extended one. And it finally pays off, changes it up and goes to the other side. Grupla, a bag full of surprises. Defense, offense, and a two-game lead now. Germany just one game away from getting their first match over China in what could be the decisive factor in who will win the overall team matchup. Stay right here. Game number three coming right up. Some highlights of exciting moments for the German pair up two to zero, but you can never count out the Chinese duo on the other side. They are strong, well-prepared, nerves of steel, and undying efforts here. We will see if Feng Pan Feng and Jai Xiang can come back from down zero two. It is must win for every single game for these men right here from here on out in this match. Feng to start with the serves. Every shot in that rally, something a bit different. Two different side spins and a top spin wide. A little bit off the top of the net right back. Some instant table tennis karma. Big shot here, the first time we've seen a rip like that taken from Schmiedberger in a while. And his club coach, Hannes Dusseler here. The 
finger up the acknowledgement. Do you think that was for Schmiedberger from Brufla? Yeah, kind of a sorry to him. My bad, if you want. <laughs> yeah, I think Brufla is just so classy. <laughs> That's got to be the word. He's the politest person. Oof. Top edge of the racket here, and that one sails. Scoreline right now, China doing what they need to do. Brukla looking to turn it around. Yeah, clear tactic uh, by the Chinese now to um, return most of the balls to Brukla. It's a little interesting to me simply because other than that big shot that Schmiedberger had, I mean, I didn't see much imbalance in terms of who was winning points on the German side. That was too perfectly set up and then even with a touch of the net. Way too long for a loop in a double match. Now just to clarify for those of you at home, a lob, a very high shot, we often call a tetra if it'll come back over the net, and a loop, a heavy top spin shot, sort of like a drive but a little slower. Chinese pair exactly where they want to be scoreboard-wise. A five-point lead now. What do you think needs to change on the German side? Yeah, it is actually uh, Brukle who's making most of the mistakes, to be honest. So um, we'll just have to be more careful. And that's this. Is, this is it. Uh, one player playing for 99% of the rally, and then uh, Schmidberger just um, falling asleep. That that's the only way to call it. In all fairness, statistically, I mean, if he's playing 99% of the shots, he's going to make 99% of the mistakes and win 99% of the points as well. <laughs> I mean, he's basically. <laughs> yeah, just some confusion about the Be mature. serve to receive combination in this game. Schmiedberger saying the evidence, I have received two balls, therefore, he would be the next server, but. Still a bit confused on the specifics of what was said in relevance to what just happened but it is now seven game points for China to extend this match. Go, come on. Tries to return the favor after the big spin shot from Schmiedberger. Locked back into play and then Fung gets his turn from the backhand corner. And the Chinese pair take the game 11 to four. So China gets a game on the scoreboard and Germany still up two to one. But we'll see if it goes to a decider or if the Germans take it in game number four. Game number four coming right up.
Players back for game four. The crowd really into this one on both sides. Chinese fans, German fans. It's nice to have a bit of atmosphere here. Yeah, at least uh, this is the end stage of the competition. So um, the rest of your team will have time to uh, support you. And the Germans as well as the Chinese have a strong, uh, a strong uh, squad here. Strongest squad on the table, Brufla and Schmiedberger for Germany. The Chinese pair as well, again. How many times now, gold medalist back to back? Back to back, I think just two times now, these two. So China looking for a third consecutive gold medal in teams. It's a Jai Brufla party here on the parallel. Schmiedberger and Fung just waiting to see if they'd be needed. Both reaching for that middle ground. So what would you recommend to the German pair right now to keep the Chinese a bit off the table or out of game five? Yeah, I suppose at some point uh, Bruchler will have to get either more aggressive or play more to the corners of the table because this uh, middle, middle one, one, he's the one who has to defend all the time and uh, Schmidberger only receives the attacks. It's not working well for the two. Good defense here from Professor Wall as he finds the baseline edge. Bruchla on the receive. Yeah, this was it. Feng just moved from the middle to the deeper backhand, let's call it, and confused Brutler right away. Yeah, it's been tough to pinpoint a place where he's uncomfortable, but jamming him up in that deep backhand corner, now it's Jai on the receive. Good shallow shot to test the reach. Outstanding touch play from the Chinese pair. Jai soft just behind the net leaves that one shallow. You've talked about how difficult it is in terms of balance to get in sometimes when it's far away. Uh, yeah, and in doubles, these two um, tend to sit a bit more far away from the table to begin with. Uh, so it can be a tricky thing to to attack on uh, some shorter shots. Getting away from the Germans this fourth game. I mean, right now they can't find an answer. The first two games, very tight, but everything was working. Now it seems like the quality control of every shot from the Chinese pair, they're just not, not letting anything slip through. Looking a bit nervous too, the Germans. There it is, a bit of side and topspin. Maybe just straight side spin, either way, a tomahawk smash. 
Not an easy ball to play, but as the players are both in wheelchairs, their center of gravity is lower, their racket is naturally lower. And a short serve here, remember, in doubles, the serve can go off the side of the table. So clever play to change it up in the service game. Still four points down the German pair. China just two more points to get into game five. Step behind the table, we can say. Trying to go down the middle, but it is China with five game points. Fung with his second serve here for the game. But a bit ambitious, and this one goes just long. Game point saved. Germany, four more points to save if they want to stop this from going to the decider. Think that was the sleeper trick where they try to just play to one player until they put the other one to sleep? There was just uh, so few energy in these uh, returns in the middle from Schmidberger that um, Feng got out short. And there it is, the Chinese pair take it 11 to 7. So from down 0 2, the momentum has completely shifted here. And the team to beat will be the Chinese pairing of Feng Pan Feng and Jai Xiang. The decider, game number five, coming right up. Feels like we're in a different stadium now as we come back for game five. And it's the German fans that are more vocal right now. Strong support for the pair. The real scenario has to be playing in their heads now. Where they lost in the final after leading in the doubles. Oh, Ooh. Fung with a nice recovery off the top of the net. But a last moment effort there from behind the body. <laughs> yeah. It's a never give up spirit. Ball still in play, there's still a chance. Every point counts. And a net recovery from Jai. I love that Brukla remembers that about five shots later in the point, still acknowledges that. So a good start for the Germans after being controlled quite well, getting half of the points that their opponents got in the last two games. This is big. This Very is the well played, yeah. Yeah, I feel like this is the start to maybe getting away. And a timeout is called. It seems wise. Remember, 
When they get to five points, they will switch sides of the table and the order of play who receives from the server. 11-4 in game three for China, 11-7 in the last game, but this is a real turnaround. I don't know, I think with Brukla and Schmiedberger, there's a calm about them right now where they don't seem to be as stressed. They seem to be comfortable keeping the ball in play until they find the opportunity, but mixing up the depth of their pushes, mixing up the placement a bit, and they're creating more opportunities, it seems. Yeah, that um, middle to middle or um, two against uh, Brugle <laughs> tactics wasn't really wasn't really working for them. But if they're the one mixing that up more in terms of um, the spins as well as well as positions, it's more difficult also for the Chinese pair to only receive to one uh, return to one spot all the time. So a quick point right out of the timeout for the Chinese pair. I mean, like a glove, this one worked perfectly. Nice power from the full stroke Schmiedberger forehand. And a look to their fans. In the very beginning of the game, a lead can feel dominant, three to zero, but it's really just the difference of three points. In the 11 point game, the tides can change quickly. just a little bit over the table. You think they're afraid of the Schmiedberger forehand? It's part of the reason they want to keep the ball away from that big stroke? Uh, yeah, and in, in this setup, he's in, in position to, um, to use that forehand. So far, he's also being clever about it and not going for the big kill all the time to open the racket. So four of the last five points have gone to the Chinese pair. They've come back. The timeout has been very effective so far. Just goes to show that a three-point advantage at the beginning of the game doesn't mean anything. And that shot from Fung was just too strong. Watch him attack. A little break off the net. That was some serious power. And now the timeout on the German side as well. So those are the lifelines. No more timeouts. Just this one here. So they will switch sides of the table. They will switch order of receiver. I feel like we haven't seen too much defensive play in terms of short wide. I guess because in doubles, you've got the space more well covered as opposed to in singles where it's just one of you and the reach is quite limited here. Uh, definitely, but uh, that still would require the player to move across the table more and possibly bring them out of balance. It is a difficult thing to do, uh, though, when you're playing against those pimpled rubbers. Five, four. So the pips there on the backhand sides, the red sides of the Chinese racket, tacky rubbers on the forehands, very spinny. Four. 
And the streak continuing. The Chinese pair not phased by the timeout. Just too much power. Beautiful turn here. Fung Pan Fung with the forehand. And now a three point lead. The Chinese pair down 0 3 and comes back to where they are now. It's been a little while, but Schmiedberger waking up the other side with a backhand punch. Now, this is the time to, to put the pressure back on. And Fung calling for the serve that he thinks will be most effective. That is another way to go um, since it's often the team partner, the one who has to deal with the receive coming from the opponent's side. Little fortune off the net, but down the line, back and forth. For the Chinese pair, they are staying away, or at least Germany is staying away from Fung's powerful shots in that rally. And they're still keeping it away. They're playing keep away right now. They just won't let him touch it. I mean, Fung is strong. He's world number one. I think that one shot that was just unreturnable from him made them realize they can't. And now what they're gonna do is they're getting him to come across the middle line and try to step in front to insert himself from time to time. Jai keeps the ball in play quite well. He's steady, but the threat is way different. The greater threat with Fung, and now it's tied up at eight points apiece in the decider. Great use of side spin here. Schmiedberger getting the energy back, the expression that we saw earlier in the tournament from him. Nice lift of the racket just to change up the rotation. And also clever placement uh, since they're bringing it on uh, Jai's side just enough for uh, Feng, Feng wanting to, uh, to insert himself in the rally. So second serve here and a big one for the Chinese pair. Chance to tie it up. A little bit off the top of the net, but a big point. And Germany now has two match points to pull off a very big upset, which could change the future and the outcome of this overall team match. Could determine who takes the gold here in Tokyo 2020. Long down the middle, one match point saved for Team China and one more to go. Given away much too easy. There's a lot of pressure in terms of who's waiting on the other side. The spin does it, the heavy forehand topspin, and Schmiedberger fired up. That is not at the opponents, that is to the crowd. Tough to tell, I just imagine at this point that that energy was cheering with his team, the contingent in the crowd. 
What a finish here, a nail-biting finish, really, by two points in game number five. Schmiedberger and Bruchla are able to capture the first match. This makes things very interesting because what it means is the favorites, who would be, we'd expect to be the favorite in every matchup, have to win the next two, and Germany only needs one of the next two to take the goal. Yeah, we'll see Funk um, face Brooklyn now in the next one and is of course expected to win so uh, it might uh, come down to Schmidberger then to bring it home for Germany. So a 47 minute match in a best of five, a marathon match, 48 to 52. The Germans were outscored by the Chinese by four points, yet they took the match. So timing is everything and points, while every point counts in some senses, it's just the first pair to win three games. You've got the next match on screen. Professor Wall, Thomas Bruchla. And on the other side of the table, the world number one, Fung Pan Fung. That match coming right up. Stay right here. One single, or possibly two singles to come. Next one is Feng Pan Feng from China. And Thomas Bruchle from Germany. And then that's is won by the Chinese, then it will go to a final match where the German will be Thomas Schmidberger against uh, Jai Shang. So let's take a look at this next match. Fen Panfeng, current world and Paralympic champion, dominated the class for 13 years, winning his first Paralympics in Beijing 2008. He followed this up with London 2012. Rio 2016 and winning here, of course. And he's got the unique title of four times Paralympic champion. Well, the same applies to World Championships, another title held consistently since 2010. He collects titles and gold medals for fun, as he also surpassed all opposition in the Asian Championships and Asian Para Games, picking up no less than 18 gold medals since 2005 in singles and teams. He's age 31, and in class three, he's world ranked number one. Yeah, doubles, show sen kara gekito deshita, Doits tai, Chugok no issen desga, Kyoa, Goshiai tomo, Heshow sen ni Chugok, Tojo stimasga, Hajimete, Kitotsu, Otoshita, Toto ni Tosne. え、そんなドイツ対中国行われてますが、次の試合はシングルスになります。まずは中華人民共和国ペンパンフェン選手31歳ナンバーワン選手です。ほとんどの試合で頂点を極めています。この東京でも取りましたんで4大会連続。And Professor Wall is back. What a gentleman. When given the choice, he says, "After you, sir." By all means, your choice. And there they are. Our home and maybe future homes. We shall see. Quite a task in front of him. Creating homes on other planets? <laughs> no, but uh, Fung seems to be from another planet in terms of men's class for uh, three players. Indeed. Wonder if he could point at his home on one of the wheels from Professor Wall on the other side. Thomas Bruchla, 45 years old, world rank number four, going up against the 31 year old, world rank number one in his fourth Paralympic appearance. He's so fast, playing against a very different style, a very casual style. So while Bruchla has the power when he needs it, he's going to have to deal with a lot of heat coming in. Yeah, we can see the difference here in Bruchla hardly moving the arm and. Fun going for the full swings. This is one of my favorite things about table tennis, that creativity is so heavily rewarded. It's just encouraged to the point that, I mean, you've seen some of the most technically sound players in the world beaten time and time again by players that can mix in side spin or defense or change the pace. A real thinker's game and spin is such a major factor. Again, if you've never played with a professional racket, you must try it. A game changer indeed. And after that wide coverage of the forehand, a tomahawk smash, Bruchla takes the first point. It's 
Good spin to the short side of the table, but Fung showing his comfort there in the control. Also his anticipation. He was well in position to bring him right back to force him to balance and get up quickly. Yeah, but great to reach from Bruchle rather than throwing himself onto the table and trying to pick up the ball right away. How good was that Tetra? <laughs> For a class three player, very good. <laughs> Just a reminder, that's a shot we see a lot more in classes one and two. He's just such a positive guy. I mean, when he loses the point, there's this look of, bravo, sir, well played. He doesn't take credit from his opponents. Always acknowledges excellence. Oh, speaking of excellence, quick rally. Those short casual strokes are good for a lot of things. Surprises, but also being efficient. He recovers very quickly. Very quiet in the arena now after all the excitement during the doubles. Well, I think the German team knew how much they were needed there. That's what makes people love to cheer the most, right? When they feel that their team needs them. Oh, that Tetra just perfect again. <laughs> He's got to keep some part of his either thighs or bottom in contact with the seat. And still we saw Fang was almost there, so it has to be perfect if it wants to be out of his reach. Yeah, he looks, Fung looks like he's got a pretty serious and significant wingspan. Long torso, good reach. Frustration in the wall's expression. Two quick snappy backhands, one and he's always back and ready. The reaction time in this point is just shocking. Wow, placement with all the topspin coming in. Brukla taking the topspin off and converting it to sidespin. Watch this, tomahawk chop and it bends. And again, the beauty of this, of this is how, how easy, how smooth, how casual it all looks. Krugla says, little help please, it's in a pretty uncomfortable place. For a moment I thought maybe he thought it was long, but then I realized what was being said. Fung with a quality serve, crossing the body there, that tomahawk to make it start on one side and move out to the forehand. Leaves it near the back edge of the table, inviting the attack, but by the time he gets to it, it's under the table. That's an outstanding shot. Now, just a reminder for context, we are at nine all in game number one, and head to head, Professor Wall, Thomas Bruchla, has played nine times and not won one of them against Fung Pan Fung. He's still uh, away from his uh, first to win. Dangerously close, battling a lot more, I'd say uncomfortably close for the world number one here on screen, Fung Pan Fung, who now has game point on his second serve. Quick off the bounce, Brugla saves game point, so here we are, deuce in game number one. Oh. 
Nice counter, very smooth. Just recognized that there was an opening. The ball was a little shallow, so he takes it right off the bounce. Watch where this one bounces. Not much backswing there. Just so quickly changed uh, the direction. Nice counter. <laughs> the quick spin shot comes in. It's so impressive because he's still recovering. Fung has to pull himself back off the table after his follow through for, from such a big forehand. A little bit off the top of the net, but it is game point for the underdog, Professor Wall. And he calibrates this time from under the table. He lifts it up, arcs it over, and spins it from way wide. Control, touch, feeling. Professor Wall's got it all, and he got game one as well. A one to zero lead against world number one. Again, this is very unlikely based on their history with only 10% of the games they've ever played. Out of 30 games, he's only won three. So one on the board, we'll see what happens. Has he made world number one angry? Stay right here to find out. In the play is back for game number two. Thomas Bruchler leading one to zero here on the receive. Fast with the pips, little rotation. Fung on the scoreboard with a bit of momentum here to take back what he lost in game one. It's not really how it works, but he got the first point. Much quicker play, taking it earlier here, putting the pressure on, forcing Brukla to be more on the defensive and cover the corners. But Brukla doesn't like it. He says, no, you can't come into my house and push me around. I'll attack you right back. I see your attack and I raise you my attack. Oh, that Tetra is going to be tough to put down. Backs away from the table after good coverage. Some surprise placement coming in, and he got his racket up for both of them. A nice opportunity for Brooklet to show some good table tennis after um, his disappointment in the singles. Courtesy of Jensen Van Emberg, United States. But only 21 years old. But yes, that disappointment, he was still the most classy player in his loss, Bruchla. Cracking forehand from the middle. Fung turns on that ball and puts it just out of reach wide, cross court. That one is just as fast as the one before that he saw from his opponent. I mean, he keeps mirroring what he's seeing. Takes a little bit longer in this. Two shots, has to attack it twice. Good defense from Fung. He's really got him twisting and turning from the middle now.
and much better for Fung in this second game, re-establishing his dominance. It's a beautiful touch shot there. Just behind the net, side spin to keep it out of reach. Brooklyn knows right away he's got to get a move on and he starts, but not enough time. Perfect placement. So now eight game points, a score line that might have been more what you would have expected based on their head to head. But this is just to get back into the match. Brukla shaking, staying loose. And loose he was. Just one game point save, still a long way to go, but confident casual play. And Tetra falls short. Game goes to Fung, 11 to three. Quite a statement after what happened in game number one. We'll see if this continues or if Brukla finds a new curriculum for the class here and starts this third game off with a very different set of homework. We shall find out game three coming right up. Players back for game three. Brukla pumping some energy into the chest here, trying to get that adrenaline going after last game, which was taken 11 to three. So good start here. A Little bit of a momentum breaker after that dominant performance by Fung Pan Fung. Yeah, Brukla fought really well in the first game and um, he sure didn't want to um, come back to an even score so fast. Oof, <laughs> did that, you see what he did? That would have been some shot. Would have been out of this world. It would have been like the wheels on Brukla's wheelchair, but check this out. Watch him blow at the ball. That's hilarious. Watch yeah, him but blow. Here you can see this is, a, yeah, this is a class three player. He, he got the shot, but no chance of picking himself up again without the aid of the arms afterwards. Although had it come down on the other side, I don't think Brukla would have had a chance to reach it. No, but the other thing is that, uh, yeah, mostly when you go for a shot like this, you have the table to fall on, and here he was right. away from it. Perfect angle here, thumbs up indeed. The Brukla seal of approval. I just don't want to let it go unnoticed. Did you see Brukla blowing at the ball? <laughs> yeah. That was my favorite part, saying this could determine if the ball comes down on my side or my opponent's side. I think he was being funny in that yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a bit of a joke. Keeping his sense of humor throughout these tense moments, not easy to do, but that's, uh, I think, what keeps him calm and cool. He's just very hyper aware, really sharp mentally. Yeah, it's also a trait of personality. Some players need to keep deep uh, concentration. Others uh, need to pump themselves up with, with fiery reaction. Third ones just need, need to stay relaxed uh, no matter what happens. Well, dead even here at the first towel break as Paparazzi shoots off. It is three points apiece. Perfect angle here, pumps himself up this time. Now even individuals have different modes that they find work best for them in different situations, but pounding his chest, he's getting pumped indeed. A one point lead for Professor Wall of Germany, Brukla. The energy's changed quite a bit. Very well done. Is that Hans, Hannes Dusseler? Yeah, yeah. Yep. 
slow and spinny, shallow on the table. Look at him now. Who's this guy? <laughs> it is work, all working again. No doubt frustrated with himself after game two. The timeout on the Chinese side. I think he's transformed. He's put on his superhero suit. He's turned from Captain Calm to uh, Professor Pumped. <laughs> Pumped Professor Wall, maybe. Superhero with many nicknames. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like we could have a few different comic books made. I hope his students take it upon themselves to make comic books about him and that his wheelchair has all of the cosmos and superpowers as well. So the last at least three points in a row for Brukla. Fung was unstoppable in last game. I mean, he got almost four times the point, nearly 80% of the points available after 14 points had been played. Interesting. When you go to being that pumped up and seeing your opponent as well, We'll see how the personalities settle out here. Very different. He just sort of looks at the opponent, nods his head, rolls away to get the ball. Remember, Germany is leading one to zero in matches right now. This is a very unlikely upset, but it could win the gold. And it's looking more and more likely all the time. Remember. Every match is best of five, so the players each need three games to take the match. But a major advantage taking this third game. Good leaning shot here. Very out of position, but commits to this ball. I guess no other choice, really, after the placement of this shot from Brukla. Could have played more cautiously, but I don't think it would have been to his favor. Yeah, and when, when you get a chance like that, uh, you, you just have to take it. No timeout called just yet. Oh, yeah, but it is, I think. And by that, I mean, give me two seconds and timeout will be called. <laughs> How's your German? Uh, normally quite quite great. <laughs> it's just that I can't really hear what, what they're saying here. No mics on the coaches and the players. Perhaps we'll have to change that for the next broadcasts. I was going to say, how's your German lip reading? But at this point, <laughs> 26, 25. Probably not how you say 26 and 25 in German. No. Yep. Good times, good times. 25 and 26, <laughs> if you're right. asking. No, good to know, good to know. That could but, come in useful. Yeah, well, hopefully not in this game. <laughs> right, oh my goodness. Can you imagine? Both players now back from their timeouts. No more timeouts left in the match. They hadn't set the scoreboard straight yet. I think that I think was a tactics that was suggested to Brukle, but it really backfired. <laughs> That's why the frustrated look to the <laughs> bench. <laughs> I didn't want to do that, but you told me to. Wait a minute. Wasn't it eight all? I agree. The t it was eight yeah, seven at the timeout. Eight points apiece. Thomas Brukla, perfect. Fair play, he says 8-8. Eight, eight. Perfect English, too, from Fung. I mean, he just completely, calmly said exactly what he needed to say in English. I noticed in the middle, it's, the point was interesting, but I was looking at the scoreboard saying 8-6 and thinking, wait a minute. They had a lot to think about. Six points in a row for world number one, Fung Pan Fung.
now two game points of his own. And that is a very impressive comeback, but it's gonna be tough to swallow on Professor Wall's side. Brukla from 8-4 up was outplayed throughout. The timeout tactic did not work. So we shall see a two to one lead. Fung in the lead. Game number four coming right up. Players back for game four. Brugla with an uphill battle now. Fung with the momentum. No timeouts left. Doesn't miss by a lot. A big chance missed uh, by him in this game two. A three, excuse me. Game two went by so fast. <laughs> I've almost yeah. forgotten about it. I think Bruchla probably did as well, strategically. Or would want to. Right. everything going for him now and no more timeouts so Bruchle will be on his own it's a very ambitious touch receive attempted there trying to take all the pace off it cut it short yeah but possibly he's thinking at this point is I'll try anything yeah well, he's definitely going to have to try something, take some risks, and he gets quite aggressive in that last point, and it pays off. A long way to go, though. This ratio will not get him the match. One point to his opponent's five. Turns up the heat a bit, and two quick points in a row. A bit of aggression to go with this touch game. Trying to move Fong from one corner to the other. It's interesting, but just shows or goes to show you how far he will go to express his fortune. He says sorry, even though we lost the point, just for making it off the net. <laughs> Saying I should have looped it there. Interestingly enough, had I not been looking at him, I don't know, it sounded almost like you said I should have killed it. <laughs> Meaning don't play afraid, don't be too cautious. For oh, that was a rally. Yeah, this is more than hypnotic. It's just unbelievable that they can both deliver the shots. Brugla says, thumbs up. Give me a break here. Catching a breath after that. Think about the shots off the pips, how fast Fung could play with those pips on the backhand side. And Brugla got them all back for a while. Yeah, and how quickly he must change between top spin and back spin shots. But he keeps this one right at the baseline. It's going to be very difficult for Brukla to find the opening attacks. Look how fast these are. That really was the best opportunity he had for a decent attack in that rally. So can he pull off the comeback that happened to him in the last game? 
Well, a big forehand shot like this sure couldn't hurt. It gets one on the scoreboard, and it's a small step in the right direction for a long journey. He'll give it a try, that's for sure. It's one thing we can always count on. Good placement, too deep to that backhand corner while Brukla is recovering. Doesn't miss by good. a lot, but yeah, that reach, his wingspan, I mean, he's really quick to get in. So five match points for Fung. Still alive, still fighting out here. Brukla saves another, well, saves a game point. But four more to go for Fung. Parts of those rallies looking like a warm-up across the table. And as soon as it looks like it's too strong, Brukla's right there for every counter. I mean, as a commentator, you're thinking about what you would say if it's the end of the match sometimes, but Brukla is not letting it happen. Not yet. Three match points left for Fung. What focus on the reach, on the lean from off the side of the table. Wouldn't it be nice to have a timeout now if you're on the Chinese side? Full extension, uses the table to get himself up just as, as little as he can, but as much as he has to. Third towel break. Smart time to take that moment, towel off. Maybe think about what you want to do, what's been working for you. Fourth match point for Fung to send this to the deciding third match. Remember, Germany up in matches, so China needs this to survive. The oh. Tetra stays so close. The jaws of defeat. Right there, he flirted with disaster and it was just out of reach. We've talked about the reach of Fung and still, what a gutsy shot under pressure. Goes for broke and it pays off. <laughs> Brooklyn now, one more to go. Nine serving 10. Oh. And there it is, oh. Fung, 11-9 in the fourth. What a spectacular match, an outstanding performance from world number one. Look at the look. I think Brukla says, man, you were amazing. And Fung was saying, give me a minute to catch my breath here. I am so nervous right now and thrilled that I escaped with that victory. You can only imagine the amount of stress and pressure building for the world number one, knowing what's to come next. I mean, if he goes to game five, there is no next if he loses this match. Yeah, China's still not uh, out of the woods on in this match. Um, the hardest part still to come now, Thomas Schmidberger for Jai. And um, it was, it was Funks to win if he wanted to even give his teammate a chance. Well, that last game was really a spectacular comeback from what, down 5-10 for Brukla. 29 stroke rally throughout this. I mean, he looked unstoppable with those five match points saved or four in a row. And now it'll be one final match. It'll be Jai Xiang of China versus Thomas Schmidberger of Germany. This should be fascinating. You don't want to miss it. It will determine who gets the gold medal. Stay right here. Singles plus three, 28 years old, world ranked number five. さあ、いよいよ最終の試合になります。中華人民共和国からは大賛選手です。団体では4つのタイトル獲得に貢献しています。2019年にはアジア選手権で個人で銀メダルも獲得、18年には世界選手権で銅メダルも取っています。この東京
現在28歳ランキング5位ジャイシャン選手ですトマス・シュミッバーガー日本のジャーマニーパラリンピックシルバーメダルシリーズ東京アノースウィン・リオウィズ・ブロンズ・イン・ロンドンヒオーソーハズ Welcome back to the men's team class three gold medal match. It is the final match of the overall team matchup. Thomas Schmiedberger of Germany on the near side of the screen. And at the top of the screen, Jai Xiang, 28 year old, world ranked number six for China. Now, this is very rare to say, but at this point, Germany would be the favorite to take gold. Yeah, well, great chances for Germany to finally finally get to that goal that escaped them in the last few, uh, two actually, Paralympic Games. Now, why I say this, or why we say this, so Thomas Schmiedberger, world rank number two, his opponent world rank number six. Now, world rankings are not always super telling because participation is a big factor. and. Sometimes for Team China, the team runs really deep and certain players don't get as much experience. But if you're playing the Paralympic Games, you are one of the chosen few to represent the nation. Head to head, Thomas Schmiedberger is five and one. He's won just over 83% of the matches he's played against this opponent. Although game-wise, 16 and seven. So it's a little bit closer than the matches would appear. Yeah, but another thing to be said is that um, Fung is actually the only uh, player Thomas Schmidberger has lost uh, to in the last few years in men's class three. But the pressure is now on him to, to take this home. So we'll see if Jai Xiang can pull off the upset or if Thomas Schmiedberger can clean it up, he is in the cleanup spot, put in this position for this reason. It was counting on the German team to win the doubles, which was not easy. We didn't even know if we'd get to see this match. I mean, what was it, 11-9 in the fifth for the doubles? Yeah, it was, it was really, really close. And nice that uh, we have this tight, close, thrilling match here uh, to end our final session on table six today. It's funny, there's so many different sports that I feel like table tennis combines the feelings of. We've talked about boxing in many ways in terms of positioning, in terms of defense to offense, catching your opponent off balance, tiring them out, tiring out the legs, or in this case, the upper body and the movement recovery. But I feel like as a team's event, this is a bit of a relay race. The baton has been passed to this man right here. Feng Pan Feng passed it along to Jai Shang and said, it's your turn, take it home for the long stretch. We'll see who crosses the line. It's a best of five match. First player to win three games, takes the gold for their team. Games to 11 must win by two. Schmiedberger on the receive. Jai Shang to start. Love Level. all. So Schmiedberger with the first point on the receive. Strong start to break service. Good use of side and underspin here. I think side spin can be a little bit uncomfortable for the opponent. Uh, Schmidberger is the master of, uh, of side spins in class three, and he's using both rubbers inverted. So he'll have more chances for that than his opponent with the pimpled rubber on the back end. Right, if you're newer to table tennis, I'll tell you about that rubber in a moment. Oh, that is too good. Just turns, pumps the fist. Like a model, did you see that? Just posed. <laughs> Someone could screenshot that and make that an Instagram profile pic. I don't think I think he'll be more than satisfied with a, a picture of a gold medal around his neck <laughs> if yeah. he pulls this match off. Seems like a classy, common, I'd say, popular choice.
that pose that was becoming so iconic, just the turn of the head into the uh, bicep there on the left. Good pressure off the bounce, those quick combinations with the spin shots. With the apology acknowledging the top of the net there, the fortune. Now, the way the score line's going right now, I imagine there will be a lot of conversation, a lot of tactical changes in the corner for Team China. Kaliang indeed, a beautiful shot. He moves in towards the net, uses that wingspan for the reach. Wheels in as much as he can to get under the table. Schmiedberger up on one wheel, almost blocks it back. No, this one was heading nicely towards the corner, just a little bit long. Oh, Ooh. nothing he can do there. That is the demonstration of where the body stops supporting you if you don't have the table to pull yourself back up. Maybe you could speak to that a little bit. Yeah, that's. Uh, I remember one time uh, doing that in training. I was so used to falling on the table always after reaching for the short shots. And um, at some point I didn't have the table under me anymore and I, I just landed on the floor. So <laughs> Schmidberger got off um, fine in this one, but uh, yeah, no chance to, to get back in time for the next. Good reach once again. Jai with the long arms and the good movement in near the net. If he waits for that ball to come up off the bounce, it just bends further out of reach. The side spin would have made it really tough. Well, look at the score line change. It felt like it was something like 9-1. Do you remember seeing that score on screen? No, but it all looked way too easy for Schmidberger. He was waiting now for a short return. It's funny. But finally, he has to work for those points. Yeah, not looking so easy anymore. Four game points for Schmiedberger to take the first game. A good underspin comes in. He's eating his own underspin after that long spin into the backhand. Yeah, he wanted to go down the line with this top spin. And there it is, Schmiedberger takes the first. He needs three games to win the gold. It wasn't as easy as it looked. The start of this was very one-sided, but Jai woke up a bit and definitely changed up the game plan. We'll see what happens with Jai Xiang and Thomas Schmiedberger. Game two coming right up. Players back for game two, we talked a little bit about the difference in surfaces, but I'd like to elaborate on the backhand side, those bumps that look like Legos we call pips or pimples. They're typically more defensive. They slow the ball down a bit. They don't spin the ball as much. And the longer they are, the more defensive they are. We lost the ball, it seems. Coming right up. 
Is it the ball or the ball picker? Yeah, the ball picker. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I, I assume they have many balls here if they need them. Schmiedberger to start game two, leading 1-0 in games. This one comes just long, comes off the table. Quick discussion with the coach. I think there's something else going on. I don't know what the conversation is. Do you have any clue? No, I couldn't make that out. Bad. Yeah, that one sat up a bit high for Jai off the top of the net. Service warning. Ah, he was holding the ball inside the table on the service toss. Oh, what movement that was. Some really, really difficult uh, shots to take. Schmidberger started this whole thing. Backfired for him in the end. Now this is Schmidberger's signature shot with the backhand. Very Krianga-like with the full arm finish. But scoreboard, I mean, this is the opposite of the scoreboard from game one. Yeah, but we could see in the second half of the, of the first game already that uh, this is not going to be easy uh, for Schmidberger, despite the better record. First point on the scoreboard, a long way to go, but I think 1-6 we saw the other way. A near a comeback, at least for a while, a bit of streak from his opponent. To the parallel, the short side of the table, clever little flick there from Schmiedberger. Yeah, because he brought himself into trouble a couple of times trying to shorten to Jai's forehand side. Uh, he expected this one to be a winner. It was just a tidy too slow. It looked like it could have been the way he hit it. I mean, he put so much into that shot. Good angle here. That's the one. That's what a winner looks like when it goes wide. The opponent with the highest left wheel we've seen. Watch how high Jai's wheel comes up. Because this is kind of far onto the forehand side of Schmidberger, but he takes it with the backhand and does it across the table from that side. It is very deceptive. Oh, right, Schmidberger now making a comeback. These guys are like mirror imaging the games. Can we nominate this point right now for point of the match? I think of this entire tournament, perhaps. <laughs> that was incredible. Jai's defense was nearly unstoppable, and then he got the attack, and Schmidberger brings it back down the middle. He's got many different poses that he does, but look at the scoreboard. 0-6, and he wins seven out of the next eight points. And what points they were. Doesn't miss by a lot, but a big point for Jai here. 
He needed that for momentum. Remember, he's down in games. Record head-to-head -head does not favor him at all. So this will be a clutch game. Doesn't miss by a lot, but I like how Jai throughout this point was repositioning himself to move in closer to find those angles and put more pressure on Schmidberger. Yeah, and he moved Schmidberger wide to the forehand. From that position, Schmidberger wasn't able to come back into his original uh, pose, but still, yeah, it was enough. From 0-6 down, he has two game points. The world number two, Thomas Schmidberger. Still fighting, saving a game point. Jai does not want to have done the first half of this game in vain. Yeah. it off the top of the net, but the touch too good. And that's uh, really clever. Very short to the forehand, very long into deep backhand. Clever combination here as well. Short serve and then deep to the backhand to test the mobility of the opponent. Rush him into getting back. Game point, Schmiedberger. And a bit off the top of the net, <laughs> acknowledges the fortune, and then quickly celebrates and gets back to the corner. A 2-0 to zero lead, quite a comeback here from Schmidberger. Yeah, that was uh, really well played, and what rallies it was. It's not like uh, Jai completely let it go and uh, made it easy for him to, to turn this around. Yeah, Jai's definitely shown that he's here to play, and he's not going to be easy to get through. So 12-10, a victory once again and a 2-0 lead. It's all up to Jai Shang now. Can his teammates will him through? Or will world, will world number two seal the deal and take the gold medal with the third game coming right up? Back for game number three. It could be the last game of this event. If Germany's Thomas Schmiedberger takes it, Jai Shang fighting to keep the hopes alive for the Chinese team. He went for the backhand once again, as wide as that shot was. The one before he played back quickly with the pips. Jai avoiding this forehand ground that Schmidberger takes with his backhand. Oof. A lot of defense there, but the last one, the pressure that he had worked to put on just kept building, creating more and more space and time. Jai takes that point. So much pressure with the pips on the last two shots in the rally. And once again, with the pips deep, deep into the backhand. This was caught in between. A Tetra will be right behind the net, so it's out of reach or comes back over. But when it's lobbed, if it's not right at the baseline to be really uncomfortable, it's just too comfortable of a shot for the forehand of Jai. In terms of body language, it feels like Schmiedberger's in serious trouble, but score-wise, he's come back from more than this before. It's a good recovery off the top of the net, but following that, Jai keeps it right in the middle. So first towel break. Again, towel breaks come up every six points, not mandatory. 
simply allowed so that players don't stall too much. Now, but Schmidberger will be happy to take this time. That defense is so solid. Again, two very different shots when he hits it with the red side of the racket. Jai, it's more defensive, backspin. Now a term if you're trying to bluff your way into table tennis and you want to impress your friends, a twiddle. Twiddling the racket is when you turn it 180 degrees to put, the, to put one rubber on the opposite side of where it started. Watch this, that was the twiddle. Nice combination here. He twiddles to play a spinny serve with the black side of the racket and then follows up by putting it on his forehand again and going out wide to control with the spin, eight points to one. And a bit of fortune here, break off the top of the net and it stays out of reach for Schmiedberger. This is a really long way to go in this game. It's not like we haven't seen it before, but um it's difficult if you have to be catching up all the time throughout the game. Solid defense, but right back in position. Schmiedberger there to finish the point. Four points between them now. Suddenly, this seems dangerously close, especially considering their history in game two. Spinny serve from the backhand to come. Not a typical point, but a point much needed for Jai, who sets himself up with a five-point lead. Once again. And now six game points to get his first game on the scoreboard in a match that could continue quite some time. And it would only get more suspenseful and exciting as it goes, but it's game to Jai, 11 to four. The match continues. China's Jai Xiang keeps hopes alive, getting his first game. He's down 1-2. It's up to Schmiedberger here. Can he win it in the fourth? Or will it come down to the decider of the decider? We shall see. Stay right here. Players back to the table. Game four, Schmiedberger up 2-1. What a marathon of this match and the entire China-Germany match overall. <laughs> Not to mention this rally. Yeah, the types of points they're having. I mean, we saw a 44-stroke rally in game number three. Deep on the table, Jai, perfect placement here. And he continues his streak. He dominates in game number three, 11 to four, and gets the first two points here. That first rally was 29 shots. I mean, we've seen matches where the average rally was four shots. Think about how much concentration with the spins and the depths and the angles different for every shot. 
And what, when that just goes on and on and on for four games. Yeah, that really is quite taxing on the brain. It just makes you so tense. But right now looking quite loose. Jai Shang, not a point dropped. Now, if he comes back sending this to game number five, the decider, he's gonna have a lot of confidence, a lot of momentum. The same cannot necessarily be said for Schmiedberger, despite, despite their history, head to head. Not at all, he was too love up. Just a tidy too, too slow or too fast even. Definitely too something, no question <laughs> about it. Wrong timing in each case. Much better here. <laughs> what happened to the wheelchair? Did he just do a front wheelie? Yeah, Did I think that was it. I would love to oh, check out, just watch the wheels, just the wheels. Yeah, there Completely. it is. Completely, <laughs> both of the big ones off the ground. Well, the players are not allowed to uh, move their bottom from the cushion, but uh, nowhere does it say that uh, the back wheels have to stay on the floor. And a timeout called now. I mean, that's knowing the rules well. It's amazing. You see this in all sports where somebody, say, in basketball's diving out of bounds and throws it at the heels of the opponent, or when someone's not looking and they throw it in at their back. That's clever. What he just did saved himself getting called for leaving the seat because he didn't leave the seat. No, of course not. And uh, he has uh, he has his uh, feet striped to the wheelchair um, for such occasions as well. I mean, that's the first time. I've been watching for about two weeks straight wheelchair events here in Paralympics, which is getting me more and more into it. I can really appreciate it. But that's the first time that I've seen anybody go onto the small wheels exclusively for a shot. Six, four. So two points between them now. The pressure really building on Jai Shang. But a good serve right out of the timeout. Nice change up. Serves spinny and long to the backhand. Two backhand service points in a row. Different placement, fast and long. This is tough, Schmiedberger down by four. Jai is the one who needs this game. It's crazy to me that he can cover the entire table with the backhand. This one goes just long, Jai now with a ginormous lead, six game points to send it to the decider of the decider. Perfect Tetra <laughs> shot. That was crazy, a drop shot. I mean, how how can you do this? Just how? This is, this is all about timing because uh, when you loosen the racket from your grip as much as he does, and just throw yourself uh, onto the ball. There's, there's nothing you can do uh, to change uh, position or the angle on the, on the racket or um, in your wrist uh, after you've gone for it. And so that's just perfect timing. And he did have a little bit of the net in it as well to slow it down, but he really, since that timeout, turned things around, cut off the comeback. Schmiedberger was on a bit of a break there, but the last two games, Jai has been on fire. 11 to four, nearly triple the points of his opponent. I mean, and still, I've talked about it several times, but when he pulls the backhand, the pips on his backhand side out to the forehand side of the table, I mean, he's covered almost the very corner of the table with those pips. Yeah, and that's a, that's a very uh, difficult uh, position to control the backhand from. So very impressive. Indeed. 
the world number six, the underdog here at 28 years old, playing against world number two, Jai Shang, on a roll right now. And he continues rolling along with the momentum here. This is the situation we discussed. It would be very challenging for Schmiedberger to gain confidence and get back into this. That was outstanding. I mean, everything that he put into the shot before should have been enough to win it, but Jai brings it back for one more, and miraculously, he gets his balance back and is able to punch that finisher. Yeah, good for him that he did, because um, otherwise you can come to the point when you're thinking, what else can I do or what else should I do? Everything's just coming back. This is again the sprint at the end of the marathon here. Both players really just upping their game. That was a big point. You haven't heard much from Jai Shang throughout. Again, no matter what country you're from, no matter what team you play for, no matter what culture you come from, everybody's an individual. And he has been a very quiet player. But he's got the team behind him now, and that was a massive point to gain the lead back to two points. Yeah, so far onto his forehand side with this backhand. That's the shot that Schmidberger just can't get away from, from the pimpled rubber. We've got the timeout now. I mean, that was a big part of what it was. When he spins it, he has so much lift. If you've never played table tennis before against, I mean, almost everybody's played some ping pong in their life. But the big complaint is, you know, I won't play with my, with my cousin. He plays with spin. That's not fair. Well, once you learn it, not only is it fair, it's the most fun part of the game, but the amount of spin that comes back off those pips when Schmierdberger attacks, I mean, this is why it's so mentally stimulating and keeps you so sharp. You just have so much to process in such a short amount of time. Especially for these guys, I mean, they're right next to the table, low and right at the baseline. Well, Schmierdberger now got his last one minute to process what's going on at the table. We'll see how it's used. He only used 30 seconds of it. This is so interesting because Jai at the first part of this uh, rally instead of going deep onto his uh, forehand side with the backhand, was doing just the opposite. Right, I was going thinking. Going deep into the middle uh, with his forehand. Right, he, he hadn't played one shot off the pips until the last two shots after about five or six shots, only using the inverted forehand side of the racket. What a confusing way to come back for your opponent's timeout. Switch of the sides after the fifth. Point one in, by Jai in this case. I mean, Jai is so stable right now in defense, but also using the pips aggressively to put the pressure on. Schmiedberger is having trouble finding answers. And now it's just about that mental strength, if he can bring it to the end. Because the advantage is there, but uh, you can quickly lose it if you're not keeping up with the same pressure put on the opponent. Jai is so patient and so calm in this. I mean, Schmiedberger fooled me a few times, hitting it to the wide forehand, and Jai was right there. He hadn't committed, 
He hadn't gone back too much, just very patient play. Nice. Nah, so he's so much better off when he's using the pimpled rubbers, a rubber as much as he can. Well, he's got a five point lead now, three points away. Jai is on fire here. This is potentially this is a crazy upset. And heartbreaking for Schmidberger. At the same time for the Chinese team, he could be the hero of the day. Not expected to win this, Jai Xiang. And he's sitting on seven gold medal points. You're absolutely right, the emotion you can only imagine, considering they're head to head. A long, long way to go, but a little bit of encouragement here from Thomas Schmiedberger. Chinese team trying to pump up their player. And there it is! Jai Shang takes it! He does the unthinkable one and five with less than 20% by a long shot here. Jai Xiong pulls off an unthinkable performance. World number six over world number two. This was so clutch. Yeah, this is, this is gonna be the hero for China today. And uh, one of those rare cases in the team event uh, we saw where um, the doubles uh, turned out not to be the deciding match. It's so interesting. Again, in table tennis, it's incredibly rare that China is not the favorite to win. But coming into the third match, there is no doubt about it. Germany was the expected winner here, so this is a real hero story for the Chinese player Jai Shang. 28 years old, and he did the unthinkable. He never gave up. He came back from down 0-2, not allowing more than four points for his opponent. And, and you can understand the agony here. Here the other side. This is, um, this is something that's difficult to digest. The physiotherapist. And they all know how how much Schmidberger wanted that gold and um, what a great opportunity this was after the Germans uh, won the double. And the yin and the yang here, tears of joy on the other side. Oh man, this is a moment here. Tears mm, yeah. of joy and he comes over to hug. He knows what it's like. This is yeah, a very touching two, moment. Such rivals and so much agony caused by Feng to Schmidberger, but today, um, yeah, comforting him. Wow, the tears on all sides for the Chinese. And look at this. Man, has it been an emotional week or what? Yeah, both crying now. One of joy, the other from disappointment. I have to say the amount of heart that I've seen at the Paralympics in the last two weeks. Whew, I think it's more than I've seen in anywhere in this sport. Yeah, this is where, where emotions uh, run uh, the highest and um, it's just this moment when, uh, when it's so close and you can't keep it in yourself anymore. I think this paints the most beautiful picture. I know the Chinese work incredibly hard to be the best in the game at table tennis. And sometimes we hear the word machines because they don't miss much because they're so well practiced. But the emotions and the empathy that were displayed by the players to come over and hug, not just to say good game, but to really hug Schmidberger after that shows a lot of heart, a lot of character and the human side of these incredible athletes. You're watching Tokyo 2020. The Paralympic Games stick around. We've got victory ceremonies to come.
Ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the men's team class eight. 皆様、ただいまより男子団体クラス八の表彰式を行います。Please welcome the medalists. メダリストをお迎えください。Konnichiwa and irashaimase. Hello and welcome back to the Tokyo Metropolitan Gymnasium where all of the table tennis action has been happening and the magic has been going down. This is Tokyo 2020, the Paralympic Games, and we are just starting the men's team class eight victory ceremony. So the standing events here. Again, the classifications work like this. One through 11, the lower the number, the greater the impairment. Intellectual impairments, class 11. Standing six through 10 in wheelchairs, one through five. So, class eight right in the middle of the pack for the standing event. And we have four different proud nations up here, but only one team per nation, so I guess that would be expected. <laughs> yes,、um, only one allowed per nation to enter the Paralympic team events, but.、Um, For the first time after 96 in Atlanta, we will have two teams share the bronze medal. Medal to z o t e w a Mr. Kim Sung Gil, governing board member of the International Paralympic Committee. Mr. Kim Sung Gil, governing board member of the International Paralympic Committee, IPC. Accompanied by Mr. Thomas f e i k e r t And accompanied by Mr. Thomas Weikert, president of the International Table Tennis Federation. He once bought me eight scoops of ice cream in one night. I liked him anyway, but that really.、Uh, he has something even better in store for these guys. In third place, or better to say, receiving bronze medals are. Team France and Great Britain. Clement Berthier for France, along with Thomas Bouvet and Aaron McKibben, Billy Shilton, and Ross Wilson for Great Britain. Once again. Taking advantage of having their teammates there to present them with the medals properly. Great Britain's had an outstanding showing at the Paralympics across many different events. Yeah, and these guys just、um, add into that medal count. As well as these two, of course. And the silver medalists representing Ukraine, Viktor Diduk, 34 year old sensation who is very strong, world number one, and his teammate, Maxim Nikolenko, 28 years old, and a strong pair indeed, these two. Viktor Diduk, coached by his older brother. Or his brother, I should say, Oleksandr Diduk, who is older than him, so I think older brother is fair enough.、Gold、Former Olympian himself, actually. And now the, the only team、Republic、that could outperform、Olympia. Ukraine in Class 8 men's、Team's、team's event. Paralympic champion. The strongest team in the world. The team representing the flag that we see fly so high, the national anthem that we know so well, it is Team China. Represented by Peng Wei Nan, Ye Chao Chun, and Zhao Shuai. Zhao Shuai, 26 years old, world number two. Ye Chao Chun, 
36 years old and world ranked number seven. And Peng Wei Nan at only 19 years old with a gold medal here is world ranked number 14. Now while China is dominant in table tennis, in general at the Paralympics, not quite as dominant as say at the Olympic games. So it must have been well fought out here with some strong opponents up on the podium. But once again, China making their country proud and getting each other's backs out here for the gold medals. So yeah, once again in the team events, we will be hearing the national anthem of China, as my colleague would say. If you can, please stand up. Yeah, I think by the end of this uh, team event medal ceremonies, we'll uh, all know that Chinese anthem by heart, but well deserved. And congratulations once again, not only to China, but of course also to Ukraine, France and Great Britain. I just need to learn the words, I mean, following table tennis avidly, doing the victory ceremonies for the last seven years. The melody is there, but I don't know the words to the national anthem yet, so wouldn't be surprised if on social media suddenly I have the lyrics. <laughs> if you use pinyin, that would be great. So the mask's back on, but you can find these amazing pictures of these smiling heroes, outstanding athletes all over social media not just the shiny smiles, but the shiny medals still on display. So once again, sport, the lovely sport of table tennis, a very international sport. And whether you come from a background where you can afford to be a member at a country club, or you can't afford shoes, you can play table tennis. It's very easy to learn, very difficult to master, but that's what makes it so exciting. And I hope you've been inspired watching these athletes play because with a lot of hard work, and I'm sure some people at some point in their lives doubting that they could ever play sports at the level that they used to, that competitive drive and that desire to really thrive and overcome adversity, it was the will they got these hardworking players where they are today, standing in front of the world with gold medals, silver and bronze as well, but to the top of the game. So thank you for the inspiration. Congratulations for the fruits of your labor. And we hope that you at home pick up a racket and try out playing some more table tennis. Congratulations once again to the men of Great Britain, France, Ukraine, and of course, the gold medalists, Gong Xi Niman, congratulations, Zhongguo Dui, Team China. Stick around, more medal ceremonies to come right after this.
Ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the men's teams, class three. 皆様、ただいまより男子団体クラス3の表彰式を行います Please welcome the medalists. メダリストをお迎えください。Konnichiwa and irashaimase. Hello and welcome back to Tokyo 2020, the Paralympic Games. We are coming to you live from Tokyo Metropolitan Gymnasium, where the action has been going down in the wonderful world of table tennis. This is the victory ceremony for men's team class three. A dramatic, absolutely Heart wrenching experience, win or lose, no question about it. We saw some of the most tender moments in modern athletic history just here, not long ago in this event. And during all the heartbreak, the consolation, empathy, and care from the Chinese men was incredibly touching to watch. But we've got bronze medals, many to give. Before the silver and the gold. The medals will be presented by Mr. Kim Sung il, a governing board member or a governing board member of the International Paralympic Committee. Accompanied by a special guest from the International Table Tennis Federation, the president, Mr. Thomas Weikert. How many scoops? <laughs> Eight, apparently. That's right. Eight scoops of ice cream. Thank you, Thomas. So we have sharing the bronze medal, the semi finalists coming from Czech Republic and Thailand. Jerzy Suchanek and Peter Svatos. 39 years old and 31, the first ever Paralympic medal for the two of them. And they'll be happy to take this opportunity to hang them around each other's necks. And the Thai men, Thailand, very strong in table tennis. Congratulations, Tilayu Trewong, Jutajak, Glinbachun. And Anulak Lao Wong, 22 years old, 24 years old, and 39 years old, respectively. A broad range of athletes. We had a chance to call these two very exciting to watch. I think the sleeper point was one of my best laughing moments. Defeated by Germany and Thailand by China. Now remember, in Thailand, if you haven't been watching the Paralympics before this, you should definitely support your team because they are strong across the board. Thailand doing outstandingly well in the Paralympic Games. Coming up for their silver medals, representing Germany for the third time in a row. Two more Thomases, Thomas Schmidberger and Thomas Bruchle. A bitter defeat just a few minutes ago, actually, in the final. Nevertheless, they get to take home yet another award for their work from this competition. A lot of care for Thomas Schmiedberger there for a very, very dramatic match that did not go his way, but it made a hero on the other side. Once again, the team to beat, Team China. And on the left, we have Feng Pang Fun. Excuse me, Feng Pan Feng, 31-year-old, world rank number one in the middle. Zhao Ping, 56 years old, world rank number seven. 
and the real hero in the end who played way out of his normal play at world number six, 28 year old Jai Shang. And again, everyone here was excellent. Both players on the left and right delivering in the final, but really pulling off the big upset over the silver medalist, Thomas Schmiedberger, Jai Shang. And I just can't emphasize enough how considerate and thoughtful and caring the Chinese players were to console Thomas Schmiedberger, give, come over, give him a hug during the tough moment, pat him on the back and remind him it's okay. So, the most famous national anthem in the table tennis world, if you can, please stand for China. There you have it, the Chinese national anthem. We should all know the words fairly soon, but the melody, you must know by now. For all the hard work that's, put, that's been put in, a lot of gold medals and medals across the board have come back to Team China for their excellence in the sport of table tennis, no matter the class. Not quite yet able to pull off sincere smiles the two germans here uh, but that will pass and um, this moment will once again go down in history i think this will be a very exciting event to watch come paris 2024 especially with how close germany was I think any team that can challenge the Chinese is popular not only around the world, but in China as well. If not popular, then certainly respected. That's right. So the players come together, arms around everybody. I love it. Schmiedberger, the Czech team, the Thai team in China, arm in arm. Hugs all around, this is what it's all about. And they, in the end, are all in this together. They sure are. A beautiful image of all of our medalists. Congratulations, Thailand, Czech Republic, Germany, and last, but definitely not least, anything but Team China. inspiring as always the best athletes in the world make you want to get out and play and whether you're seated standing one leg two or none table tennis can be played by all for life so but not by many it can be played as well as by these guys here absolutely it takes a lot of time and work but some of these players started quite late so with determination willpower and a lot of experience you never know, you two could be finding yourself at the Paralympic Games. So, practice hard, play a lot, have fun, be kind. And don't forget, we've got one more day of action. As this session comes to an end, tomorrow will be the final day from Tokyo Metropolitan Gymnasium. The last medals will be awarded here from the Paralympic Games. You can expect some drama, some incredible fights, a lot of excitement, and maybe even more importantly for you, a lot of outstanding entertainment. So until then, take care. We look forward to seeing you real soon. With the singles and the teams, we've just got five gold medal matches to go. And of course, victory ceremony, and that will then bring to a close table tennis at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. Have a lovely evening. What's left of it, we'll say good night, Tokyo.
さあそしてその明日なんですけれども明日も団体の決勝戦が5試合組まれていますその表彰式も行いますいよいよラストデーとなりますけれどもね、えー、明日も熱戦を期待したいと思いますそれではまた明日お会いしましょう So drama, action, excitement, and human emotion. This is what it's all about. The experience coming together with players all over the world for the love of sport, for the pride and patriotism of a nation, but the love of each other in general, spreading the entertainment, the love, and the excellence here. You've been watching Tokyo 2020, the Paralympic Games, and we can't wait to see you for the final day of action tomorrow right here from Tokyo Metropolitan Gymnasium.